hopefully you can see me in that. Uh, heading out moose hunting today. Uh, we're gonna go out looking for some uh, mule deer, whitetail, or any bull moose. So it's our last kick at the can here before I run out of time and winter kicks in and we gotta spend more time at the farm. But uh, today I'm taking out, uh, heading out solo. I'm gonna be taking my 1994 Forerunner and my 1975 trailer. So, uh, our camper, so. Show you what I got rolling so far. Welcome back to the channel too. Just like to say thanks to everybody that stuck it out through our dry spell there. Just been getting the farm going and with sheep and everything else. We haven't had a lot of time for the channel. Gonna get back at her this winter here and we're gonna slam some good videos your way. Keep tuned in. I'll give you a quick tour of the, the machine. Classic 94 Forerunner. My buddy Garth helped me uh, get the uh, head gasket done. We did the wheel bearing and a few other things to her, and she's up and running. This will be the first time for it pulling the camper. They've been hooked together before, but they've. Uh, she's never actually hauled it down the road, so we'll see how this is gonna go. Like I said, I'm not in a giant hurry. My hunting spot is only maybe two hours from here, probably two and a half hours slow and steady with this machine but I lightened the load and uh, took it as easy on the forerunner as I can it's still in trial period trusty silver over there is getting the motor out pretty soon put into blue so we'll see how that goes hey and here's uh, two new members of our team Tucker this is my buddy Tucker He's so awesome. We'll take you hunting next time, buddy. Yes, we will. And this is Brandon's pup. His name's Bandit. He's a kissing bandit. He's a good pup, too. They're great dogs. For just under a year old, they sure listen good. Right, Tuck? So anyways, here we are. I'm gonna just head into the sun and see how today goes. All I gotta do is throw in my rifle. And by the way, to go with the 94 Forerunner and the 75 Camper, I'm going to be running a 1940s, I mean, uh, 303, British 303. Leaving the 308 and the 300 Wind Mag at home. Traveling light today. Going to take the gun that gets it done. 303 is to shot down a lot of things, including the Red Baron and hopefully a moose for me. But there she is. She's a beaut. I'll show you my uh, rifle when I get onto site. Not sure how much video I'll be able to shoot on this trip. I'm just solo and uh, I'm running one camera. Yeah, this is it. Cell phone. Just leave. There we go. And now I'm going to get ready to head her out. Throwing in the rifle. Putting the dogs away. Here we are about uh, five k's from my house. We're on Blackwater now, so this is gravel road for the rest of the way. Just getting out, doing a check. Look, I can see one strap that's loose already, and just when you hit gravel, always good to get out and check. But um, we passed by some very interesting trailheads here, so this is the Collins Overland Telegraph Trailhead, so. There's actually a campsite here for uh, horses, ATVs, and then the trail goes off on the right and switchbacks across Blackwater here a few times. But we passed by a couple nice trailheads. This one's the Collins Overland Telegraph Trail. And uh, I'll stop at the next one too, and that'll be the Alexander, Alexander McKenzie Trailhead, I believe. And I want to ATV that one. It's not far from our house, so another one we're gonna stop by I'm gonna tighten up a couple straps and we'll get back on the road but that's Blackwater it was probably minus three at my house and we left light dust in the snow on the side in the in the shadows and then uh, 
Yeah, we're just off into beautiful caribou country. thing making today chilly is that wind minus 3 minus 5 minus 15 it's not bad it's it's the wind that makes it cold beautiful little campsite right here on the left it's nice and private right on the lake normally empty Looks like we're into the snow covered road from here on and the thing about Blackwater Road here is Monday to Friday there's some serious logging trucks coming down here take your time stay in your lane don't die so still rocking in two-wheel drive but I'm gonna stop at this Blackwater River crossing and uh, engage my hubs in case I need it for the hill climb. The washboard here has been pretty bad. It's probably minus 15 right now. And this is the Blackwater River. I'll get to the other side and give you a better shot. Well, Forerunner's holding up nice. Like I said, uh, old school manual locking hubs. I like it. Hmm. Coyote tracks. Definitely not deer. <laughs> and uh, nobody has their small dog out here for a walk at uh, minus 15. Hub's locked in. It's good. I don't know if you can see that. There's little frozen round ones floating in the water there. Chunks of ice that are perfectly round. We're gonna come back here and do some gold panning. Some camping in the snow, cause that's a beautiful campsite right there, so. Blackwater River. Again, it is uh, minus something out. I don't have a jacket on. Well, almost at my destination, but this is uh, one more uh, neat little stop here. Alexander McKenzie Trail, and uh, the natives here call it the Grease Trail. And there's a little plaque up here I'll show you, and it explains uh, exactly what's going on here. But uh, this area was pretty much decimated by wildfire. I think it was 2018. Well, here we are, Alexander McKenzie Trail. Um, it takes off that away and goes this away. I'll show you a couple things here. This, <laughs> go figure. This is the actual part of the original trail. They fenced it off. I know, it looks very similar to right there. I'm not a history buff, what do I know? <clears throat> Anyways, there's a few signs here. Up here in the north, they do a lot of mushroom picking anywhere there's been a forest fire, so mushroom picking up here is a serious business, so. And I assume soon with the cancel culture, the Alexander McKenzie part will be off of this, so watch it while you can. 
and this is the little story about the grease trail. This just kind of gives you an idea where we're at. Take another good look. This is the Bat Nooney Crossing. We're coming up to the Bat Nooney Road pretty soon. <laughs> Four runners in a in a hurry to get going. Take her easy, Turbo. We'll get there. But yeah, the trail goes off of this way. I believe this section is not, you can't ride your ATV on this section. Uh, there's some sections of the Alexander Trail that you can't. They're not very long and you can easily go around them, so. And there she goes. And uh, I'd like to hike it someday, but we want to ATV the Collins Telegraph Trail first. Then we'll come out here and walk this, maybe next summer. <laughs> like I said, it's time to put these running shoes away. Get out my hiking gear, get my winter gear on. This is the other side of the trail. I'm gonna flip this around for you here. Sorry about the shaking, but I didn't wear my gloves. It's freaking cold out here. And this is the last sign, and then we'll get back on her and go. It just says that it's restricted. No snowmobiles or ATVs or dirt bikes. It's reasonable. And like I said, it isn't for a very big section. Anyways, gonna get back at her. So probably get about uh, maybe, I don't know, half an hour, maybe 45 minutes left. According to my fuel gauge, we're getting close. I haven't burned a ton, but this is only a three liter motor. Most of the trucks are running, including our buddy's uh, Jeep Gladiator, I believe is a four liter. So a little shy on power and pulling a big trailer and all, but making her slow and steady catch up to you guys on the next stop and so far so good four runners hanging in there only thing I've seen so far is uh, there's a bunch of deer but uh, I was doing a big windy hill climb in a very snowy icy section I wasn't getting out there and stopping on the hill so well that's why they call it hunting not shopping well, it's official people. We're getting out there in the middle of nowhere. We're off of the main logging road, so if you get lost out here, a hunter might pick you up, or but other than that, you better be self-sufficient. And we're leaving management zone 513. We're now into 7-Eleven. We can hunt moose now, they're on the table. So, uh, but uh, we're out of the caribou now, so we traveled out of the northwest corner of the caribou and we're into the south west part of Prince George Forest District. The, the signs all say Vanderhoof, but that all falls under Prince George. Looks like we're coming up onto about two inches of snow and we're maybe, maybe ten minutes from the lake we're stopping at. Oop, I see Silver Tacoma. This is the spot. Oh, there's the Gladiator. Nice. 
Nice. Nice. Well, we made it. Untested truck. Did really good. Burned about uh, just under half a tank of fuel for a little three liter. Dragging this thing up some pretty steep washboard hills. Did really good. My buddy Sakoma. Gladiator in his tent. Everybody's sleeping right now just because they were out early morning hunting. So this is their afternoon nap. So try not to wake everybody. Just dropping my camper, getting things set up. Oh, there's something I need. I see it right now. Zooming in. There we go. Nice. Don't matter how cold. Let's go take a look at the lake. Well, this is Lintz Lake, L-I-N-T-Z. Apparently you need a, a boat would be better fishing here, but we're hunting moose. Super nice. I don't know if you can see how clear this water is. Nice puffy cloud. And this whole place, there's nobody here but us. Cheers. Down squirrels. Squirrel chucking things at me. So there she is. Like I said, just trying to be quiet. Everybody's still sleeping. I kicked these big mushrooms out of the way. My wife's allergic to mushrooms, so. I just don't want to get them on my camera gear or anything. Really impressed and happy with the Forerunner. Ran great. The Tacoma better fucking bat it out of the park or it's gonna get replaced by an older one. Well, let's finish getting this thing set up. Well, here I am, uh, kind of settled in. Um, 
it's tiny in here it's perfect for hunting it is an insulated and you can't stand up in here there's uh i got lots of room even scotty can stand up in here but uh let me show you around the place sleeping quarters Just making some hot water to take with me in the afternoon hunt so I can make a coffee and a few other things. This is uh, my sink. If you can't find anything, it's in the sink. Oh, yeah. Yep. Got old Milwaukee girls. Damn right, sweet doe. But uh, all runs off a uh, solar panel through there I keep these covered up because they're so annoying when you're trying to sleep it tells you your voltage your amperage out battery status like I said at night they're annoying and uh, the fridge is more of storage actually it's for when you want to put things in that don't freeze I should actually move the beer into there. And, uh, yeah, she's, she's a cozy little thing. My food actually in the cooler there to stay warm. Because, again, I think they said it was minus 15 here this morning. In my view. Dirty window. Yeah. So we're going to get a poop in a group. Those guys are still resting, so uh, once we get everything together, uh, we'll head out on uh afternoon hunt here until it's dark. Cheers. We'll catch up to you on the road. don't know this area this is a new area for me so uh, just kind of exploring a little bit I'll do some calling too uh, I believe that that's the most effective way is to call them into you so but also keeping an eye peeled for uh, mule deer anything else white tailed deer until October 31st the end of midnight then it's uh, any buck for right now. Any mule deer, any white tailed deer, mute, as long as it's a buck. And moose, for us right now, is the same thing. We have uh, two of us out here with a limited entry bull tag and also spike fork moose is open. So a smaller moose, spike fork, you don't need a LEH for that. run down on my gear too. Got my birch collar, binox, bear spray case emergency, and easy accessible pouch. Bears are running out but they're still out here. British 303. I did a few calls. The wind's nice here. I've got a good sight range. I'll show you guys what I'm seeing. Watch that tree line down in the shadows. The sun is kind of hot for them, so they'll pop out in the shade right along this edge somewhere. Ah, uh, ah. Uh.
out my first moose hunting spot. No luck. Just bomb down the road to another one where I know it's a good ridge. I can hang out there till noon and I know there's moose in the area. It was maybe minus 15 last night. Celsius. Don't know exactly, but somewhere around minus 15, minus 17. Good morning. Said this spot here is. Uh, I've seen signs here, but I've seen moose, but I'm gonna check everywhere. Busy little rabbit. About 8.30ish, found a new ridge I can sit up and look from, scope around. Show you some tracks I found. Comparison. Another side of them. Like most tracks or something like that, those ones. Do some call in here, pour a coffee, hang out for a little bit. So I'm gonna drive into my parking spot and then I'll hike into there. Cause it's uh oh, there's tire tracks. <laughs> Someone drove in here. That's not a good sign. It's my spot, motherfuckers. Well, aha. They stopped right here. They were scared to scratch their truck. That doesn't sound like me. So down here about, nah, no. Half a kilometer is my parking spot, and then I hike in another half kilometer, 
and it's about a two mile ridge that you can walk and it's accessible so if I do get a moose I can get it out that's pretty important but basically this is the tightest spot here and I was hoping it would keep all the hunters out and apparently it has Ooh. And uh, down here also was a whole bunch of wolf tracks. So I know there's uh, moose and wolf down in here. And lots of bunnies. The most uh, track you see out there is rabbit tracks. Uh, you can see why no one comes to my parking spot. But it's also secure so that I can leave my truck and hike two miles away from it. No one's gonna come down and piss it. I've only seen an ATV down here and I've only seen his tracks. I've never actually seen anybody down here. Just one morning I hiked in and someone had come in with an ATV and turned around and left. Before I found this spot, someone had harvested a moose down in here. You can see where they had cut a trail so they could get the moose out. But, uh, that was probably four weeks ago, five weeks ago. I don't know if you guys can see this. Nah, the bush is pretty thick here. But it kind of drops off. It's good hunting on foot from here all the way along this ridge. But up here I have two ridges to hunt. The one I'm on, the valley below with the river. And the opposite mountain which isn't far away I could I could get a, a moose out of there if I had to whether I'm uh, any good at a 300 yard shot I'll find out I guess like I said I'm running uh, iron sights and this gives you the idea kind of just drops off nice little open ground the far mountain over there gets a little closer up ahead of me. <laughs> Not even at a two-wheel drive yet, so. I've been in here with my Tacoma a few times, so I knew this thing would make it, no problem. My parking spot's right up ahead. Lots more animal tracks here. Looks like there's a wolf track. So I'm definitely going to take my bear spray and my big knife. And lots of ammo. Six wolves can eat up ten bullets in no time. And this is my parking spot. So I just bust a Yui right here. In case you guys are wondering what I wear at minus 15, I got my good hunting boots. Uh, Gorka. Orange hat. I just don't trust other hunters. Uh, uh. Got my moose call. Classic British 303. Safety's on. One in the chamber already. There's wolves like here. Cheers, we'll catch up to you down the trail. Gonna lock this thing up and start hiking. Like I said last time here, it was uh, lots of wolves. We had the uh, Scott called the cow moose and she walked between us. Not that we're hunting them, it's just well, there's females. Dude will follow. So See, 
that's a wolf track. See no moose track this time. And uh, I do have my bear spray ready. Rifle is on the shoulder. Whew, the sun's getting warm. I'm dressed for minus 15 and it's mm, minus five. I'm sweating. I'm gonna cut cross country to my ridge that I hunt from. I know this is passable. Hopefully it's not too noisy. I do have all this on my I hunt map, so I can't really get lost here. And I've hiked this area a bunch. You can make your own trail, but these bushes are pretty unpassable in places. If you just stick to where the animals go, the trails are decent. You can see they use it a lot. Oh, it goes right off in the direction I want. Oh, oh. got my bear spray ready because in an emergency if the bolt did freeze because it is minus 15 or minus 5 now maybe but uh, in an emergency you gotta be able to defend yourself a tree that's just covered in bare claw marks. See? I don't know if the sun's blocking it, but the fire came through, the bark's falling off. Let's check out this next tree. Bear climbed way the hell up there. And the moose come, the river's down in there and winds up past me over here. And go back up onto the ridge. I wanted to show you that bear tree. For a little bit here. <laughs> it's, it's bunny tracks and wolf track, coyote track. Not one fucking moose. Anyways, all you can do is try. That's why it's hunting and not shopping. Got about 2Ks walking into the sun here. Just gonna keep scoping. See how it goes. So, I'm 
get back to the truck and have a little bit of breakfast and coffee and move on. Picture I have of the Forerunner and the lake in the background. I was on the top of that mountain. Well, everybody, it was an unsuccessful hunt again tonight. Really, not much sign, or you know, seen a couple tracks. No real good moose indicators, so. I gotta get some meat in the freezer for my dogs and me, so it'll be a long cold winter. So uh sitting here having a beer by the fire. Yep. Kinda see the lake out there. Well, this is, uh, I believe it's Thursday morning. It's about five after six. Um, gonna head out up to one of my favorite roads here that I found. Gonna do another loop. Like I said, uh, just been no sign here. Not, not good enough sign to justify staying longer. So I'm gonna do this morning hunt. I'm gonna come back and uh, pack up my stuff probably. Unless I get a moose, then I'm here for the day. Uh, probably two, but um, yeah, I'm gonna pack up probably. Well, the only thing, I actually did see some uh, moose tracks on the main road that were from this morning, but again, it was a cow. Uh, but at least it's sign. And on this road, uh, the only thing new is uh, two big wolf tracks, I'll show you. They uh, jumped on the trail right, came out of the bush here. One went that way down the center. The other one went this way. And they're from last night because I drove I drove these tracks. There's my tire track. There's the claw mark in my tire track. I drove this at sundown last night. Last hunt, this is the road I took, so. And in case you there's the size of uh, the wolf track. In case anybody's doubting it's a big fucking wolf. And in case anyone's doubting, it's two big wolves. And my freezer's empty. I don't like hunting wolf, but my freezer's empty, man. My dogs need food, I need food. That's the size of the tracks right there. It's a size nine and a half boot. That's their two tracks. They just go down the center of the road. Like I said, I drove this at last hunt last night. 
of these tracks are last night. Keep rolling down here. Hopefully you see a moose. Well, that last road had a lot of good sign on it and stuff like that. Uh, wolf track, moose track, deer track. I stopped and did some calls and didn't get any response. So, uh, you know, hunted hard, did what I could. I'd like to cruise a little bit farther, but uh, I'm down to half a tank of fuel and uh, I didn't bring enough jerry cans of fuel. I only brought two. So I uh, need a half a tank of fuel to travel each way pulling the trailer. So I've got under half a tank now to get back. So no more driving around and looking at spots. I just got to go. Like I said, uh, it's a good area. I'll definitely come back. Like I said, probably not this year. If I do, it'll be in early November. Hopefully with more snow. But uh, the Lintz Lake campsite, it's really nice. I, I enjoy it. it. You're protected from the wind. There is a lake with good fishing, nice trout. Not that I did any of that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a good place to camp. Firewood, fire rings, so you don't cause forest fires. There are still active fire, forest fires within 20 miles of where I am right now. It's minus 15 and snow on the ground. Still forest fires. Western Canada is fucking... She's drying out, man. Yeah, I gotta get something in the freezer. Just not enough sign here to justify staying longer. So, cheers. Thanks for watching the channel. Um... There you go, people. All packed up, ready to get out of here. Just gonna do one last quick walk around the campsite. Remember, out in the bush, pick your shit up, man. If you carry it in or you see someone else's garbage, burn it, take it with you. It, don't leave it in the bush. Double check that you don't leave crap. Fire pit's nicer than when I found it. A couple blocks of wood are gonna go back to my buddy's camp. And for uh, the Forerunner's first go at it, went really good. Yeah, I was really happy with the way it towed. Hopefully we got a nice video of uh, how to process and uh, got a mule deer. Moose turned up nothing this time, so. Cheers. Well, apparently I'm committing to uh, Blackwater because there goes the Nazco Gurnoff. living life if you don't take chances. I'll just stopped in here to check my load. Straps all look good. Truck's running good. Definitely low on fuel. But uh, back at the Blackwater River crossing. So this is Blackwater Road we're on. This is Blackwater River. It's here a couple days ago. And uh, the ice was just starting to form here. 
So let's see what we got for ice here now. Yeah. So there was little dinner plate size ones in here. Now they're river starting to freeze up. That's okay. That means we can drive on water soon. Oh, there's those little dinner plate ones that I'd seen. Those were the only things floating here and now they're got some bigger chunks. So the river is flowing that away. This is a big eddy on this side, so it's a little shallower. And comes back. But hopefully I don't lose my sunglasses. Trying to make it to Rocky's General Store. They got gas there. I don't know about the stores in your guys' neighborhood, but ours sells gas, beer, guns, ammo, fishing license. A really nice corner store. Well, I'm interested in gas today. So, oh, check it out. Fuel light just came on. Fuck me. Damn, well, fuel light works. Damn. Damn. Well, believe it or not, after 30 kilometers of the fuel light being on, I actually made it to Rockies. It's right here. Guns, ammo, and more importantly, gas.